Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Welcome everyone this morning. I have a few thoughts to share this morning before we get started. Uh, 1 John chapter 1 and the message translation, my, my current favorite translation. <laughs> From the very first day, we were there taking it all in. We heard it with our own ears, saw it with our own eyes, verified it with our own hands. The word of life appeared right before our eyes. We saw it happen. And now we're telling you in most sober prose that what we witnessed was incredibly this. The infinite life of God himself took shape before us. We saw it. We heard it. And now we're telling you so you can experience it along with us. This experience of communion with Father and his son Jesus Christ. Our motive for writing is simply this. We want you to enjoy this too. Your joy will double our joy. Walk in light. This is, in essence, is the message we heard from Christ and are passing on to you. God is light, pure light. There's not a trace of darkness in him. If we claim that we experience a life, a shared life with him, and continue to stumble around in the dark, we're obviously lying through our teeth. We're not living what we claim. But if we walk in light, God himself being the light, we also experience a shared life with one another as the sacrificed blood of Jesus, God's Son, purges our sin. If we claim that we're free of sin, we're only fooling ourselves. A claim like that is errant nonsense. On the, under, on the other hand, if we admit our sins, make a clean breast of them, he won't let us down. He'll be true to himself. He'll forgive our sins and purge us of all wrongdoing. If we claim that we've never sinned, we walk out and contradict God. Make a liar out of him. A claim like that only shows off our ignorance of God. So I've heard good teachings on that section, and I've heard some pretty condemning teachings on that section of scripture. And I'm here to tell you that God is light, and we're the ones that choose to hide in the darkness. He doesn't punish us with darkness. He doesn't withhold his light from us. That's good. Oh, he doesn't withhold it. Yes. We choose to hide in the darkness. Yes. Oh, Adam, he yeah. said, oh, I sinned, and he hid. He hid and chose to hide in the darkness behind a bush rather than come and just walk in the cool of the day with the Lord. And we do that over and over again to ourselves. As born-again believers, we still choose darkness. And that darkness dwells in our minds. We are perfect before God. We, our spirits, are redeemed and righteous and holy, as perfect as they ever will be. But we see ourselves, we allow that darkness in our mind. It's a process yeah. to get rid of that darkness, right? The renewing of our mind. God's word reveals his love. And we choose to open ourselves and come out of hiding and reveal our true selves to God. That's what he wants. For us to just come before him in honesty, in truth, withholding nothing. Whether it's sin or whether it's fear or doubt, those things only occur in the darkness. Right. And we are the ones who have to choose. Are we going to stay there and let those things have power over us? Or are we going to come humbly and say, God, you promised that you would take this from me. First John chapter 2, verse 8 says the darkness is on its way out. And the true light is already blazing. It's blazing. His love is blazing in our hearts. And it filters through our minds. And it comes out our mouth to others. And it, and it, it needs to have its way. But when we focus on our sin, when we focus on our rule breaking, we hide in the darkness. And a long time ago, the very first thing the Lord ever taught me was about the, the power of his forgiveness the finality, the totality of his forgiveness. We hide in the darkness. I, I saw um, a cellar, like a house, right? A cellar. Our minds are this great house that we dwell in, right? And it was the cellar. It was the bottom. It was cobwebs and darkness and scary cobwebs and boogeymans and all that stuff. And I saw a door. It was covered with crime scene tape, and I knew what was behind that door. My sin. The sin I didn't want my mom to know about. 
the sin that I didn't want my husband to know about, the sin that I didn't want God to know about, but I knew. And Jesus said, take me in. Let me shine my light. And I said, Lord, you don't want to go in there. You don't want to know the depths of my sin. And he said, you have to take me in so I can set you free. Yes. And I had the key in my hand. And I tried to give it to him because you can't tell the Lord no. I said, here, Lord, you go. I can't. I can't face it. I can't face who I was before I knew you. I can't face who I am sometimes while I know you. I can't face who I'm going to be knowing all of your goodness. And he said, you are the only one that can unlock it. So I unlocked the door and I opened the door and I said, you go, Lord, I can't. And he says, you have to take me in. We have to take him in. He is a gentleman. He doesn't just come right in. We invite him. But oh, he is faithful to come. If we just opened the door and I walked in and I had a flash of all of those memories. And he walked in right behind me and filled the room with light. And it was empty. Empty. Nothing but light in that room. Nothing but light. And I turned shocked. I'm weeping. I look at him and he said, you're the only one that remembers. Your sin is as far as the east is from the west. You are the only one that remembers. Do not give these things power over you. Let my light shine. Yes, oh, do you understand that when we let his light shine, there is nothing to fear. Do you understand that when we partner with him, when we come into the light, we cannot fail. We cannot fail. Amen. He is faithful. He is not a liar. There is no darkness in him. What he has promised us, he will do. So I encourage you, when fear comes, when doubt about who you are, about your relationship with him, about anything that comes against us in this fallen world, let his light shine. Come to him and let that light shine and you will just be so free. That's a freedom that you can't experience anywhere else in this world. Right. Amen. Does anyone else have any prayer requests or anything you'd like to share this morning? Yes. Yes. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I would uh, appreciate <coughs> continued prayers for the, our daughter Bibiana. Uh, <coughs> she's up in uh, uh, Quakerdale uh, in Manning, Iowa, and we just really ask you to work in her, uh, Lord, to work in her heart and life, and I really like what you said, our sins separate east and west, and God didn't say north or south, because north and south is a definite point, and east and west does it, you know, and, and I just want to thank the Lord that we can pray one for another, and and when God has us in that place where we can't go anywhere, he can work in our heart, and sometimes when you get all the way down the bottom, that's the best place to be, because you have no choice but to look up. Can't go farther down. And then I ask you to pray for her other daughter. Uh, uh, she lives out in Oregon. Um, she wants to get a school of financing. Uh, she has some health issues. We ask God just to really work work in, in her life and provide a finance so she can continue going to school. And I just want to thank the Lord for how the Lord just never gives up on us. And sometimes we, we feel like we give up on ourselves, but God just keeps telling us, to keep going. When he says, come follow me, well, if you follow somebody, they're leading the way. They're in front of you. And so just the fact that Jesus says, you can do it because I can do it. You know, and, and I just want to let the Lord know today how much that we love him, but his love is so deep. we got so much more we can learn mm -hmm. about him and learn to praise him. Like Psalm 34, 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. His praise is telling me in my mouth. And that's in good times, times that don't feel well, when things are frustrating. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. Yeah. And to get to that place, you know, that takes a lot of maturity. And we, we, we don't understand it. We just keep doing it and praise the Lord and bless Him and thank Him for all the things He's done for us.
just, you know, strength and wisdom to deliver what we uh, apparently all agree with, which is the truth. Mm -hmm. And in the truth, freedom is what it is. Mm -hmm. And freedom means you are free. Yes. And indeed, yes. you are. And yes. when, just like you said, there is no condemnation. Yes. Period. Yes. End of the story. And I know sometimes it's hard to believe because I see myself in the mirror and I see me. But what I see is the flesh. And the flesh is already taken care of, and it's in Jesus' name, so that we have the strength and the power and the desire to go forth only by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, because without it, we wouldn't have anything to say. But we do have something to say, and with that is love and kindness and caring, because I, I just spoke with somebody yesterday, and, and they just, they, they can't re be free from the condemnation that comes from man, and they don't understand that that's where it comes from. And uh, to just be free, we are free. Yes, and to be able to to see people, the chains just busted loose. And man, when that happens, wow, God can do some mighty yes. wonders. Amen. 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 Just a few announcements. Um, Tom Stamen will be here this Friday at 7 p.m. So anybody, um, anyone who's not familiar, he uh, will have some praise and worship. He will have a message, and then he will prophesy over anybody who wishes to have prayer, and will speak uh, God's word into your life. Uh, and then May 23rd, we did move Eastern Gate House of Prayer. Um, May 23rd, 7 p.m. This is a time we set aside two hours of praise and worship and prayer and intercession. Um, I don't know if the Lord has revealed his heart yet for that, but we are still a couple, of, a couple weeks away. Yeah, so, um, but we usually focus on scripture um, and the Lord will reveal what, um, what our task is and what our mission is for the night. So, um, I believe, oh. Um, yeah, and go ahead. This is uh, Pastor Robinson, and uh, it's called Father of Life, and uh, this is pretty well lined up with what the calling of this church, I believe, is. Um, anybody wants to borrow it and see, you'll see how God supernaturally works through those that are called to specific places and times and days. Um, I believe this is a majority of speak the word this morning. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Hallelujah. I am a believer and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. 
I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Yes, Lord. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease germ and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And Abraham's blessings are mine. Uh, John and Don, if you two would like to come take the offering. You sat in the right spots this morning. Don, you want to ask the first thing to come up? Join us as we worship the Lord.
Take us through, Lord. Take us through, Lord. Take us through, Lord. Take us through, Lord. Take us through, Lord. Take us through, Lord. No matter what I'm facing, Lord. No matter what I'm facing, Lord. Hallelujah, you are faithful and true. Hallelujah, Lord. Every knee will bow. Every tongue confess. Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Every knee will bow. Every tongue confess. Christ is Lord forever. You are Lord. You are Lord. Every knee will bow. Every sun confess. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. 
Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Cindy, can you get in the file there and pull out two copies of Break Every Chain? <laughs> Woo! You know, when a revival breaks out, you guys better be ready for anything because there is no conformity.
Lord, give us vision. Give us vision, Lord.
right now. Every need is met. Hallelujah. Every situation resolved. Every enemy defeated. Hallelujah. Every victory is ours in you. And we praise you for that this morning, Lord. By faith, Lord, we declare we are more than conquerors through you, Lord. We have victory over every circumstance and every situation. We, we are victorious right now, Lord, right this moment by the power of Jesus' name. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. Give him a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you again, worship team. Great job as always. Hallelujah. Sunday school kids can go. I just... Uh, you know, thought that came to me, we all, some, well, I won't, I won't uh, lump you into my carnality, but uh, <coughs> that last song, I'm thinking, the king is not dead. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's still in the building. Praise God. For those of you who weren't familiar with that song, it happened to be an Elvis song. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, Hallelujah. Thanks, Suzanne. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Obviously, another Elvis fan. Praise God. Amen. We are fans of Jesus, are we not? Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I've got a, uh, well, I believe to be a, a, a simple message this morning, but like so much of the gospel, the simplicity of the gospel, it's, it's misunderstood or, or just overlooked or taken for granted. And I think it's good that we remind ourselves sometimes of uh, just exactly what it is we have. Last week I was talking about uh, justification and uh, how you just don't hear justification preached. You hear everything else, you know, how to be a better person, how to overcome this and how to get this and get that and, and the latest spiritual trends and so on and so forth. But ultimately the message is about justification because everything arises from that. In other words, we don't get our inheritance without an identity of being sons and daughters of, of Christ. It just doesn't happen that way. I mean, it, doesn't, it isn't like God just dumps it out and it, it, it just grab a handful. It comes from us being aware of who we are in Christ and having the confidence then to boldly come into the presence of the Father and say whatever we have need of. Now, he's already supplied it 2,000 years ago. In fact, actually, before the foundation of the world. He supplied everything that we would ever need before we ever even existed. And the, the scripture teaches us that it's in us. The kingdom is in us. All that, you know, that the kingdom has, all that is uh, a part of the kingdom, 
is already in us, so it's just a question of us getting it from the unseen into the seen so that it will manifest, right? And uh, that's, uh, in a roundabout way, what I'd like to talk about uh, again this morning because we have, a, we have these precious promises, and they're already ours. And, and I really, with all my heart, want to see the church enjoying those benefits, enjoying those blessings and those promises that God has because he's paid for them. I mean, as surely as we sit here today, uh, conscious and, and hopefully confident in our salvation, we should feel the same way about our healing. We should feel the same way about our prosperity, about our relationships being made whole. All of those things are part of what Jesus paid for. He was cut off from God. He was separated from God so that we could have that unity with God. And in that unity with God, all things come to him. I mean, the, the whole universe cries out for this unity. You know, everything, every rock, every tree, everything is looking for this connection again with the creator. Amen? And when we, when we have that, that's the glory that's released, that he talks about the whole earth being filled with his glory. But it starts out with a very simple truth. And so I want to read a couple of scriptures to begin with here this morning. Uh, beginning with John chapter 3, verse 16, and then John 6, verse 47. Obviously, scriptures we've all heard countless times. As often as you've been in church, you've, you've heard these over and over. But again, we need to, we need to look at this uh, in light of who we are in Christ. And of course, John 3, 16 the one everybody learns when they're a kid, even as a heathen kid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, our folks would send us off to Bible school in the summertime if for no other reason than the free cookies, the Kool-Aid, and we were out of the house for two hours a day. You know, <laughs> six of us kids. That was, a, that was a major blessing for my mother, praise the Lord. But for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, one of these days, I'm going to get Don to preach on that only begotten because we had a little conversation this morning, and there's some really some, some deep things of God that God would like to reveal to us. And I believe Don is tapping into some of that. Amen? But verse 47 of chapter 6 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So John 3.16 says that uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe on him would have... <coughs> everlasting life. And then he repeats this here, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. That's, that's done. It's a done deal, right? So how many times have you uh, heard those same words and yet so many people still find it hard to understand that simple belief allows us to obtain righteousness? That's it. It isn't your effort, it isn't your being really good, it isn't you being kind of good or your ups and downs of being good or not being good or what you give or don't give. All of those things are great, but they have nothing to do with you being righteous. You're righteous simply by faith. You believe in these scriptures that we just read, and God declares you righteous, Amen. saved, right? Amen. When Paul wrote the letter to uh, Romans, he presents a case for uh, righteousness through belief. And, uh, in fact, it's, he, he's explicit about it being by believing and not by behavior. And let's look at Romans 1.17, if you will, Sheila. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So... Though the letter begins like this, if you, uh, you wouldn't know it if you only read the first few pages of the first two or three chapters of Romans. Because most of the first three chapters is about human depravity. Praise the Lord. Why we are complete failures. It's not a pretty picture. Praise the Lord. So if you're, not read if you're reading it from a religious perspective, it is just one big slam against you and against humanity in general, right? But then at the end of the third chapter, 
things begin to change significantly. And Paul then begins to explain the actions that God has taken to reconcile us back to himself. Uh, Romans 3, verse 21 through 23. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now he says, but the, now the law of righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there's no difference. That's huge. He's saying, once you're a believer, there's no difference between you and Jesus. Praise the Lord. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, with the exception of Jesus. Everybody. I've said many times, I mean, from the Pope to... Billy Graham, I don't care, pick a, you know, Benny Hinn, I don't care who it is, but anybody, big, you know, quote, unquote, Christian, and they've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. They all needed a Savior. They all still need a Savior. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the first word here, but, is the most significant. Amen. Because the first word is, yes, we were depraved. Yes, we were enemies of God. Yes, we were total losers. Yes, we deserve to burn in hell. Yes, 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 but, but, praise the Lord, but you can still obtain righteousness. With all of that failure, with all of that screw up, with all of that humanity, with all of that self-will, with all of that, but you can still be righteous. Paul is telling us about a form of righteousness apart from the law. A righteousness that has nothing to do with obedience to rules and regulations and stipulations and all of those things. Amen? He says we can be labeled as righteous in the eyes of God without living a perfect life. Because Jesus did. Our substitute. Romans 3, 22 through 25. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith to His blood. We've studied that word before. That propitiation means mercy seat. The, what, the covering of the ark where the blood was always sprinkled on the Day of Atonement to cover what was in there, which was the Ten Commandments, the law, that blood covered the law. Mercy was then released. So whom God has before forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. I mentioned this, this the other day. It might have been last Sunday. That is not talking about the remission of sins that are behind you, but the remission of sins, he's talking about the Passover that have been passed over. That the, the sense of the word passed that he's using there is that they have been passed over. I know that we're not talking about the same, or same spelling here, but that's not my point. The point is they're in the past simply because they have been passed over. If you get the semantics there, praise the Lord. So his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Amen. So we've been declared fully innocent in the sight of God. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise fully the Lord. innocent. This absolutely erases our sinful record. And that is what's called justification. Yes. We sung about it. We testified about it. As far as the east is from the west. Amen. Good point, Tim. Not talking about north and south because there are points there on the poles. But nothing from east to west. It just, I mean, that's how we got this country here. Praise the Lord. Amen. They just went east to get west. Hallelujah. But God says, as far as the east is from the west, so far have I put your sins. He doesn't know anything about them. He, he, you're the only one, as Suzanne said, who is aware of your sin. 
far as heaven's concerned, you're the only one that has, has any awareness of it. That's why God wants us to have a, a mind that has been renewed by the word of God, where there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, because we have no consciousness of sin. Now, that's a big challenge, but that's what God wants for us, because Adam and Eve did bad stuff. Amen? I mean, based on human behavior. But they were not sinners. They were innocent. They weren't conscious of sin until they ate from the apple, of, or the apple, yeah, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There was no sin consciousness. And when we got redeemed, that's what we got redeemed to. Being redeemed means to be put back in the original condition. The original condition was not that we don't do bad stuff from time to time. The, the original condition was that there wasn't any law to tell you there was bad stuff. You were innocent, like a little kid is innocent. Amen? A little kid will do the same thing. I've got, we had three grandkids with us for the last three days. Oh, good Lord, have mercy. That's why you're seeing bags that are, I mean, normal bags, but these are like the really big deal. So anyhow, uh, the two-year-old, I mean, he's on this thing. He's got a cold, so he's on this thing with that finger in the nose. I mean, it just makes, it freaks me out. It just makes me crazy. So I'm ripping tissues and sticking them in his hand, and he's shoving those up his nose and everything else. Okay, that's one thing. It's irritating, but he's a two-year-old. You don't, you don't want to see me doing that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, you go, oh, please. You know. A two-year-old is bad, but it's, he's innocent. He hasn't got any social understanding yet. Right? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Okay, well, it was a good example in my mind at least. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm just saying, he doesn't have a consciousness of that being bad behavior. There's no such thing as a bad behavior for him. Believe me, there's no such thing for him to have bad behavior. He doesn't have a clue. But that's what I'm saying. We, if we judge him as adults, then we're frustrated all the time. But if you look at him as just a little kid, you just, ooh. I know. You can't punish him for being two years old. He's innocent. And that's exactly how God looks at us as we are redeemed. Yes, yes. We're innocent. Yes. The, the law has been fulfilled. There is therefore, we're no longer under the curse of the law, meaning there is no law for us. Yes. It's the law of love is the only law that we have. The law of faith, Paul talks about, right? Yes. So this is, this is what God's trying to get us to is the place of no sin consciousness. If you ever get to the place of no sin consciousness, you'll never have to hear another message about uh, uh, no condemnation. The only reason you ever feel condemnation is because you still have a sin consciousness. You're still thinking that there are things that I do wrong that God's going to get me for when God doesn't know anything about them. God looks at you, he sees Jesus. You're an heir and a joint heir with Christ. Amen? He, it, the moment he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, is proof in itself that you have got, had to have been justified completely because God cannot enter into sin. He can't be a part a, or even in a place where sin is. Right. Right. Amen? And yet he's dwelling inside of us. Yes. That, that needs to tell us something. We're okay with God. We're good. Amen? Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So it's the imputation of righteousness and justification and it happens one way and one way only, by faith. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now, faith in its uh, simplest form is just simply agreeing with God. Mm -hmm. That's what I talked about Wednesday night. And I know sometimes I get off and just wander around. But I, I'm not trying to be complicated. It's just that. You know, you just see all the sorts of different examples and, and opportunities for God to show you the truth. And sometimes you just go too far and out too much. And, you know, come on, let's face it. We all have thoughts that make total sense to us until we open our mouth. <laughs> and then you look at the other person and they're going, what in the world is he talking about? And you realize that was probably a thought that should have just remained a thought. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because everybody's not thinking in sync all the time, right? But I'm still saying that it's it's faith, the simplest way to describe faith, because faith is something we're always struggling with. We're always trying, well, I just need more faith. Everybody thinks that just like the disciples did. How do I get more faith? Do I pray more? Do I fast more? Do I do this? Do I do that? No, you just agree with God. 
That's the simplest way to express faith. So some of us right now have had promises that we've prayed about, that we've found in the Word of God, that we have declared, and yet they haven't manifest. And I'll talk about that a little bit, but, but the way that they manifest is we believe in the promise. We agree with what God said, and that's called faith, and faith will then manifest or cause to manifest whatever that promise was. It gets it out of the spirit realm and into the natural realm. We call it manifestation, but it just simply brings it into a reality that we can see here and now. It already exists, right? So, so the, faith, the simplest thing is just simply you agree with God. So do you agree with God this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. Or do you doubt sometimes what he said? You know, I know I agree with what God says, but sometimes I question my understanding of what he said. Because it hasn't manifested, so I start looking for reasons for it to not have manifested. Yeah. Right. I'm reading the wrong translation. You know, I need to see the Greek. I need to get the Hebrew. I, you know, anything, just something to give me a scapegoat, something to give me a way out, an excuse for it not having happened, or a way of changing it so that it will happen. Now, Wednesday night, and I'll just use this, because there was only a couple of you here Wednesday night, so I'll just say it again, praise the Lord. When Jesus, in Mark 11, Jesus goes, uh, he and his disciples are coming uh, from Jerusalem. They've been in Jerusalem, and they're, coming out of, and they're coming out of Jerusalem, and going to like Bethany, I believe it is. On the way, he's, Jesus sees a fig tree that's, in, that's got all the leaves are out on it, and it you know, looks like it should have figs on it. He goes to the fig tree, but there's no figs. There's just leaves. And so he curses the fig tree, even though it was out of season for him. It, wasn't, it really wasn't supposed to be, but it didn't have it anyhow. And so he curses the fig tree and says, you'll never, have, you'll never bear fruit again. Then they walk away. The next day, they're on their way back to Jerusalem. And this time, they're, uh, or I guess I should, it's the other way around, actually. They were going to Jerusalem, now they're coming out. So they, anyway, either way, they're coming out, and, they, and he says, his disciples look and see the tree and they say, hey, look, remember the, the tree yesterday? The master cursed it. It's withered from the root up. I mean, it was completely dead now. It wasn't dead when he said what he said. When he cursed it, well, it was, but it wasn't visible. The root had been cursed. It just took 24 hours for that to manifest, for them to see what had been done the day before when he spoke, right? Okay, that's all good. But here's the important part of that is what happened between the time that he cursed it and the time that they saw the manifestation. He went to the temple and cleansed the temple. He dumped the money changers. He you know, chased them out of there. So what I'm saying is this isn't about us being cleansed. He, God did this. Jesus went in there and did this. God in the flesh. The moment you agree with God, God sees that as faith. God steps in. No, you not. You are the temple of God. He comes in and starts sorting through the junk that is causing us to not believe. Past experiences, somebody else's experience, whatever didn't happen, you know, all those things. Jesus comes in and cleanses the temple so you will continue to believe. So that manifestation can come. Praise the Lord. Okay, you're looking like that's a stretch. But in 2 Chronicles, you see the very same type of metaphor being used. Because in, in chapter 28, there's a, a wicked king, and he has put idols and all of this junk into the temple. Chapter 29, a new king comes along, and the first thing he does is tell the priest to go in and cleanse the temple. Right. Now, you can't see what the priests are doing inside the temple. So he says, open the doors. Now, here's what David said. Lord, set a watch over my tongue and the door of my heart. So it's what you say in agreement with what God has said that will open the doors for God's miracles. And you won't say what God says for any prolonged period of time without manifestation unless you exercise faith and get out of you 
all of those negative, non-agreeing things with God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's not because you're absolutely right. It's not talking about being a perfect human. It's talking about walking in the agreement with God, walking in the spirit. That's what we do. So we live, they, they, those that are, it's, to what he said too, the, the, the scripture says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now religion has tried to define that as being, well, uh, you're only in the spirit if you're perfectly doing every Christian duty. That's not what he's talking about at all. You're either in the flesh or you're in the spirit. Yeah. And being in the flesh isn't just this body and the actions of this body. It's the way I think. Exactly. Because I'll only say what I think. Exactly. I can't say anything that I don't think about first. Right. So we have to have our minds renewed to the word of God so that whatever God has said, I can agree with that, open my mouth and declare that to be the reality for me, and it will manifest. It has to manifest. Yes. Now, Jesus showed the perfect, uh, I think the, the perfect example it should be a 24-hour turnaround. But hey, I'm not worried about 24 hours right now. I'm just concerned about manifestation for every promise of God. Yeah. I'll, I'll work on the time, you know, as we move on. I think it'll just happen on its own. But the reality is God is trying to get us to understand you are justified. You are righteous. You are holy. You have an inheritance. You have a right to every one of these promises. But you don't get the promises simply because you have a right to them. You get the promises because you use faith. And faith is not a big, heavy-duty, you know, outrageous spiritual act. It's simply believing what God said and saying what God says. He says, if my word comes back to me, it comes down like rain and snow, he said, whatever I have said, and if it will come back to me, in other words, if you'll speak it back, it will produce whatever it was sent to produce in the first place. But there has to be somebody saying it back. Somebody's got to be agreed. Amen. And here's my, my point in all of this is you will not agree for any length of time unless you really believe that you are justified. And unless you understand your justification is not based on your behavior or your acts, you will always have a sense of condemnation. Therefore, you won't have boldness to come to the throne of grace. Yeah. I wasn't that good this week. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? That's It's simple, and yet... It's complex only because of our human nature, our, our, our human way of thinking. Right. And I'm telling you, God wants us to have every miracle, every promise, everything that he's provided for us. He wants us to have it or he wouldn't have done anything for us to have it. Exactly. Come on. But there's a part that we play, and it begins with salvation. Whomsoever will believe on me will have eternal life, has eternal life. Yeah. It's the same thing that Jesus said when he said, if, when you pray, pray believing and you have whatever it is you're praying for. You are saved instantaneously the moment you put faith in the word of God. Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. I've never seen God. I know some people have visions and so on and so forth, but the Bible says you may get a, a, a vision of Jesus, the manifestation of Jesus in the flesh, but no man's ever seen God. And yet we believe. Why? I believe his word. Yes. I believe what the word says. Amen. I believe it will produce. If I didn't believe, <laughs> amen, I, I believe in healing because I believe in salvation. Amen. It's the same. It, it all works the same way, and it all happened at the same time. I got healed. My, my, my healing came the same time my, my salvation from, from uh, sin it all happened at once. In fact, the word is actually sozo, which means fullness and completeness and totality and, and so forth. Yes. Praise the Lord. So the word faith that Paul uses in this particular context is the Greek word is pistis. P-I-S-T-I-S is the uh, phonetic uh, spelling. And it, it literally means to have conviction of the truth. Praise the Lord. Now, I, 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 all I'm trying to do, what I, my main purpose is to get you to understand faith is not as complicated and as difficult as we make it out to be. We have faith healers. Okay, praise the Lord. But I'm looking at every one of you here as a faith healer. According to the word of God, these signs will follow them that believe. Simply believe. I mean, it comes the same way salvation comes. He became poor that you might become rich. You don't need a prosperity prophet. 
the only reason you need a prosperity prophet is to make you more confident that you'll get what it is God has already given you. We say, we say things, and I'm not trying to be critical of anybody, but we say things like, well, they have an anointing for this. Come on, there's only one anointing, and it's Jesus, and you have that all. You have it all. The fullness, he said, the fullness of God, the Godhead dwells in me bodily. And of that fullness have all you receive. You are all have the same fullness. Praise the Lord. That's why we, pr we, we encourage in this church testimonies and different things like that. It's not just so we talk. We know that we're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, but also to give people confidence that they not only can stand up and declare what God said, but they'll do what God said. We don't, we don't hand out a little flyer here that says only so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so -and -so pray for people or lay hands on people. No, in here, anybody that's born again should be laying hands on anybody who needs hands laid on them. I mean, you know, with respect. Yes. Praise the Lord in the name. In Jesus' name. But you know what I'm saying. You, you can get weird, but I won't even go there. But I'm just saying that we, we, that's what we should do. Yes. These signs follow. And they, will, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That we, we confess that. But that isn't something just to take up some time here on Sunday morning. It's to establish a way of life, a way of thinking in our minds, so that when we leave this place, which, where it ought to be comfortable and safe to do those things, that we're not inhibited and intimidated to, to do the same thing out there. Exactly. Amen. It only becomes bizarre and weird when we are bizarre and weird. Sure. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be freaky. Mm, mm, you know, I'm going to pray for you. Get ready. You, you can just say, hey, you know, I see you're limping. Can I pray for you? Yeah. It's, that, it's that simple. And 99% and of the time, the person will say, yeah. Even if they're not a believer, they'll say yes. Come on. There's an occasional 1% that claim to be atheists that are just confused people. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. They're not evil. They're just ignorant of God's goodness, yes. of God's love. Praise the Lord. So, God has declared us his righteousness. So faith is just simply a matter of, of choosing to genuinely and sincerely believe. Period. It's not a matter of behavior. It has nothing to do with behavior. I know that that bothers us. Because everything about us is taught behavior gets rewarded. Good behavior or bad behavior. Our two-year-old grandson heard about that for three days. <laughs> I'm indoctrinating him into a demon religion. A Christian pastor and grandfather. Now, I'm saying that's life. That's what life does. And religion has jumped on the bandwagon, and it does the same thing. If you be good enough, God will do something for you that you wouldn't do for anybody else. And it's just not true. God's love is unconditional. Yeah. Amen? Thank you. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a matter of choosing to believe God, not a matter of choosing to behave, babe, uh, uh, to behave in a right. certain way. Right. See, I mean, your faith in Christ was a belief that you chose. Right? Wasn't, really wasn't that complicated. You just chose to believe. Where others have chosen not to believe or just don't believe. Right? Your relationship with Jesus, your salvation, was because you chose a conviction of truth in your mind. Praise the Lord. And God honored it. Immediately. Instantly. Having faith in God means you are fully convinced that the God of the Bible is real and you're willing to trust him. Amen? A perfect example is like Job. Job said, I know in whom I have believed. I know that my Redeemer lives. That's it. That's faith. Praise the Lord. Real faith in Christ saves us at the moment, at the instant that we believe. The moment we placed our faith in Christ, we are transformed, and God at that point declares you are righteous. In fact, he declares you're the righteousness of God. It doesn't get any more righteous than that. Amen? Ephesians chapter 2, 
Uh, verses 8 and 9, Sheila. Praise the Lord. Everybody say hallelujah. God is great. Everything's good between me and Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Praise the Lord. Now, honestly, I don't always feel like I'm saved. I don't always feel like a good Christian. I'm talking about feelings now. Praise the Lord. In fact, I'm not even sure how you define a good Christian anymore. And for me personally, I've failed you know, more than I like to admit. But I'm confident in God's assurance that I am righteous. Because it has nothing to do with my failure. It has to do with his success. It has to do with his victory. Hallelujah. See, if my belief were up to me, there's not much of a chance that I would even stick with it. God's the one who gave me the ability to believe. He calls it the faith of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, when this thing is all wrapped up, you're not taking credit for anything. And the whole idea of casting the crowns back to the Lord, you know, nobody's going to feel you know, like they've been slighted. That I think will probably feel like a red hot coal. <laughs> I know for me it will. They hand it to me. I'm whoa, 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 you know. I'm here for one reason only, Jesus. Amen. All right, let's look at a couple of scriptures here. John uh, six, verses twenty-eight through twenty-nine. You're off the hook. Jesus did it all. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is finished. And he finished it. You didn't have nothing to do with it. Amen. Then said they unto him, what shall, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God. Look at this now. Don't, don't confuse the context here. He said, this is the work of God that you believe on him who he has sent. Yeah. The work of God is that you believe. Yeah. It's not the hope of God. It's not the expectation of God. It's the work of God. The reason you believe is the work of God. Help! Say praise the Lord. Amen. The reason I'm a believer is because of God. No man comes to the Father except the Spirit draws him. Nobody believes unless God gives them that ability to believe. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm feeling pretty special right now. I don't know about anybody else in here, but God wanted me saved so much that he gave me faith to believe what he say, that he wanted to save me. And he keeps that there because I don't have enough faith to do that myself. Because I can tell you, early on when I was in the holiness church, uh, when I was first saved, man, I, I, was a, I failed all the time. And if I'd, have used, if I'd have just been using my intellect, I'd have had to say, you're not saved, you idiot. And I'd have been in the altar every single service. The only reason I wasn't in the altar every single service because I was as big a hypocrite as everybody else in that church and didn't want them to know Amen. What a screw up I was. Praise the Lord. But they were too. But they were doing like all of us do in all churches to some degree. We play the Pharisee game of picking and choosing certain sins as being more dangerous or worse or heinous or what have you. When God lumps the gossips right in there with the murderers. And I mean, he's just trying to show us that, look, you fail in one part of the law. You have failed in all. Amen? You covet, you're an adulterer. You're an adulterer, you're a murderer. You're everything. You're all of those. You're not just that one thing. But see, that's what we try to do is try to make it about one thing, and then we think, well, you know, that's not a bad, that's not terrible bad. God will probably wink at that sin, and I'll, and I'll get it together. No, if you're going to live by the law, you live by all of the law. You're going to be judged by it continuously. And that's what God's trying to deliver us from. Even this day, even today. Why? Because he wants these promises to be fulfilled. Yes. He wants his glory revealed. Yes. And it has to start here with believers Amen. who have confidence in God and not in their flesh. Right. Praise the Lord. That's the work of God. 
that you believe. Look at uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Praise God. On behalf of Christ, amen, it's been given to you to believe on him. Now, you can understand why Calvinists go down that road of predestination. It isn't predestination, but that's, it, you could see it that way if you didn't understand you know, the, the totality of God, knowing the end from the beginning, and so on and so forth. Praise the Lord. Unto you, it's given. Think of that. You're here today with your you know, varying degrees from day to day, from moment to moment of your confidence in God based on your behavior, whatever it is, all of those things that we all struggle with. Mm -hmm. But get this. You wouldn't be here at all except for God. Right. He's did it, and he's doing it. Amen. In the face of our failures. Amen. Come on. Amen. I mean, this is great. This is the good news. This is the good news of the gospel. Yes. We should be the happiest people. Yeah. Amen. We should be the most joyous people. People ought to just get sick of being around us because we're so happy. <laughs> they ought to. I mean, I'm serious. Yeah. We ought to just, <laughs> whoa, life's great. Wife just wrecked the car. Ha! <laughs> so what? It's good. It's all good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's the will of God. Here, here's what the scripture says. It is the will of God for every person who believes in Jesus to be saved. Yes. Now, I've often said, well, we know it's the will of God that all should believe and none should, or all should come to repentance and, and so that none would be lost. But actually what it's saying is it's the will of God is always done. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. As long as there's somebody there to believe it, to agree with it. And the will of God is that anybody be that believes in Jesus will never perish. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Every person who believes in Jesus will be saved. Hallelujah. Period. Yes. I, you mark it down. Mm -hmm. That is the will of God. Thy will be done mm -hmm. on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And Jesus promised that any person, any person who has believed will never be lost. Look at John uh, chapter 6, again, verses 37 through 40. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. All that the Father hath given me shall come to me. Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I am come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. It's, it's settled. It's finished. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise God. Let, let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. <clears throat> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You're talking about faith, you know. Think of uh, in Hebrews 11, verse 1, it says, Now... Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But then you read on through Hebrews 11, and you see all of these people <coughs> listed in there. And the only thing you see listed is their faith, yeah. right. where they agreed with what God said. Right. They didn't. That wasn't the only thing they did. That's just the only thing that's recorded. Because Sarah laughed at the promise. Mm -hmm. Abraham questioned the promise. Uh, over and over and over you see people that, that failed miserably 
But only thing listed in that in the scripture, or the only thing that God recalls, is their acts of faith when they agreed with Him. That's why when you get to heaven, there's no record of sin. There's no record in heaven of, of your sin today. The only record in heaven is your agreement. Yes. When you agreed with God, you were born again. Hallelujah. Any, anything other than that is not recorded. Come on. Praise the Lord. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Glory. Now, I don't know why... People think there's some way, a, a, a way of getting more faith. You're going to get more faith than Jesus? You're going to get it some other way than Jesus? He's the author, the instigator, the initiator. Yeah. And the finisher. Completes it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying again, if it were up to me, to my faith, in my own ability, I wouldn't be a Christian right now. I failed too many times to have the guts to get up or the, you know, the, the sense that I could, I could succeed. Right. History and, and, and my life's uh, uh, realities would have declared a whole different scenario. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about, hey, you know, I'm laid up in some crack house. I'm just saying, look, if you understand what sin is, we're, 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 we're horribly faulted, and guilty every day, all the time. Yeah. If we're honest with ourselves, we'd all have to say, if this thing is about me, I'm a washout. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why this is good news. Yeah. That's why it's good to understand he did it. He's doing it. Hallelujah. He completes it. He started it. He carries us through it, and he finishes it. Yes. We're, yes. Not, we're not a part of the equation except we Agree with what he says. That's all. That's all he wants. That's all we've got to give. And he even initiates that. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, is set down at the right hand, the throne of God. Amen? So he's the author, the finisher of our faith. He also is the perfecter of our faith. Amen? which means so that we continue to believe. How many of you had a really negative experience? The manifestation that you prayed for didn't happen and something really, a sister die, a brother die. Man, that'll slap you right between your spiritual eyes. It'll make you question why. Oh, come on, I believe in healing. I, I prayed with them, I prayed for them for, you know, we did this, we did that, we did all this stuff, and yet, I still have faith in healing. I still believe God. I can't explain that. I don't have an explanation for it, but I still believe God. Why? Because He is the one that keeps me believing. If we were based just simply on my experiences, on my own intellect, I'd have to throw my hands up and say, I don't have an answer for you today. But you don't really need an answer. You've got Jesus. You just need to be reminded of that. That never changes. I'll never leave you or forsake you. Amen. I'm with you. I'm going to be in this thing to the end. No matter how much crap falls. Uh -huh. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, I'm going to remain faithful. And my belief will remain strong. Not because of my ability. Not because of my goodness. But because he's going to continually give me the ability to believe and remain faithful. Amen. Romans 5, uh, verses 8 through 10, and we'll quit at this. Romans 5, 8 through 10. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Praise the Lord. We have the righteousness of God imputed to our record. 
And now we have permanent access to God. Nothing we do is ever going to change that righteousness. Nothing's ever going to change our standing with God. He's going to sustain us and keep us. And all of this is from God. And it's simply by believing. That's how we need to think. That's how our minds need to be renewed. So that we expect our relationships restored. So that we expect healing to flow. So we expect prosperity to come. Amen? So we expect the mind of Christ. We expect revelation. We expect success. For I know the thoughts that I have of you, he says. Amen? Blessing and a good end. Praise the Lord. You won't say it if you don't believe it. And if you don't say it, you're not opening the doors for the manifestation. Amen? There's nothing in this Bible that God didn't put there for a reason. It's not just a cute little story about a fig tree withering up and Jesus getting mad at a bunch of uh, Shylocks. Uh-huh. It's, he's talking to us yes. today. It's not a history lesson. He's telling us today how we live. Yep. He does it in the Old Testament as a type and a shadow, and then the revelation comes in the New Testament, and it manifests when we acknowledge it recognize it, and begin to operate in it. Yes. We know these things to be true. We just have to agree. Amen. If he says, by his stripes you were healed, you need to say, by your stripes I'm healed. Amen. And keep saying it until it manifests. Amen. Amen. Amen? If he said he became poor that you might become rich, then you need to open the door and cast out anything in that temple that doesn't agree with that. And say what he said. Amen. Amen. Prosperity has to come. Amen. Financial increase has to come. Amen. Amen. We're not we're not prosperity people. We're grace people. We're we're Jesus people. And the result of that is prosperity. The result of that is healing. The result of that is restored relationship. The result of that is wholeness. We don't need to preach one thing more than another, or we have an anointing for this. We have an anointing come from God. Amen. And that anointing will produce anything and everything that you have need of if you can agree with it. Amen. And open the doors of your heart and speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Don't think that he'll get anything from heaven. It isn't that God doesn't want to give it to him, but how many times have we said, I am the righteousness of God in Christ, and before we get out the door, it's you, we're saying to ourselves, you idiot, you know, that was about as unchristian as you could have thought. Or sometimes, even while we're here worshiping. Yeah. Ever had a weird thought? Mm-hmm. God, I don't want to know what it is. Because <laughs> I'll be thinking about it next time. I have them. Everybody has them. And that's what the devil wants to do is, you know, my old pastor used to say, uh, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you don't have to let them make nests in your hair. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to re- retain the thought. It comes and just let it go. Mm-hmm. Praise right. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God's not judging me based on the thoughts. He's judging based on what I'm saying in agreement with his word. Yeah. That'll change my thoughts. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. He's a good God. He's done it all. The work is finished. Yes. It's just for us to believe Glory. and speak in agreement and watch manifestation come. Glory. Say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise, praise God. God. All right. Glory to God. It's that simple. We are justified by faith. The faith of Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's, good. it's just really good. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. You are dismissed. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Have a great day and a great week. The Lord bless you. I know he will, hallelujah. Shake hands with our visitors. Great having them here today. We're trying to uh, coerce him into coming back and playing music with us sometime. Praise the Lord.